Uh, let's look at the back of your blue sheet and kind of go over what's on that, and then we'll look at some examples. So we've talked about graphing uh, and the characteristics of all the functions we've done so far. We did it with quadratics. We did it with polynomials. Now, they had very similar characteristics. We talked about their domain. We talked about their range, their intercepts, uh, their extrema. Uh, what else did we talk about? Their increasing, decreasing behavior, that sort of thing. Rational functions have some special characteristics that we're going to talk about. Um, and two of those are called holes and vertical asymptotes. Now, yes, that's a very strange word. You have to be very careful when you're saying it. Um, but those come from the excluded values that we got when we were simplifying. So that's why this is related to what we just did. So here's the first case. If a factor cancels, that causes the function to equal 0 over 0, and that causes what we call a hole. We set the factor equal to 0 to find out where that hole occurs. Okay. Uh, the other option is if the factor is left in the denominator. That causes us for, uh, the function to be unprized, and that's a vertical asymptote. Um, and we do the same thing. We set that factor equal to zero to find out where the vertical asymptote occurs. We also have another type of asymptote. It's a horizontal asymptote, and that describes our end behavior. Okay, so with polynomials, our end behavior was going to positive or negative infinity. That's not always the case with rational functions, and we'll see that here in a second. We've got three scenarios. Okay, we compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. If the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. If they're equal, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. I'll show you how to work in a second. If the numerator is less than the denominator, then it's y equals 0. Okay, so we've got to know those three cases. And then to find our x-intercepts, with polynomials, we set it equal to 0 and solve. Well, same thing's going to happen here. We've got a fraction equal to zero. The only way that fraction is going to equal zero is if the numerator equals zero. So we set the simplified numerator equal to zero, and we solve for our x's. Okay, so let's look at some examples of this. On your white sheet, let's look at number 17. We're going to start the same way that we did with the simplifying. We're going to see if we can factor it. And we're going to try and factor as much as we can, but you have to be careful with this factoring. Okay? When we were simplifying, 9 times out of 10, something was going to cancel. So we could kind of use the numerator or the denominator to help us factor the other part. Well, with rational functions, sometimes it cancels, sometimes it doesn't cancel. So you have to be very careful with your signs aka number 17 here, the numerator does not factor, so we just keep it. The denominator, we can factor out a GCF of 4, but please do not be tempted to change that sign so that it's the exact same thing as the numerator, because it's not. Nothing is going to cancel here, so we don't have any holes. Okay, so no holes. Vertical asymptotes, we take what's left in the denominator and set it equal to zero. Well, four by itself is never going to equal zero. X plus three can. So that means that X equals negative three is our vertical asymptote. All right, so X equals negative three is our vertical asymptote. Here's how that looks on a graph. At negative three, we draw a dashed vertical line. Okay, that means our function can never equal negative 3 because if x equals negative 3, then what's going to happen? We're going to have 0 in the denominator. We cannot divide by 0. So our function can never touch that vertical dashed line. Now, it's a dashed line. It's not technically a part of the function. Uh, it's just a visual representation to us that we cannot equal that value right there, okay? 
uh, horizontal asymptotes. You've got to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. I always look at the original. It's easier to look there at the very beginning. Okay, the top is x to the first. The bottom is x to the first. They're the same. So when the degrees are the same, it's y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the top looks like it doesn't have one, right? Well, what is it understood to be? One. So we've got one over four. One to four is our horizontal asymptote. So on our graph, at y equals one four, just kind of guesstimate <laughs> there, you're going to draw a horizontal dashed line. Okay, x-intercepts. We take the simplified numerator. Well, nothing simplified, so we just take the numerator. Set it equal to 0, and we solve. So that means 3, 0 is our x-intercept. We can also find our y-intercept. I didn't put this in the instructions, but how do we find any y? How do you find the y-intercept for any function? It's usually the constant on the end, but we've, we've got two ends here. Plug in zero. Okay, we plug in zero because if you're on the y-axis, your x-coordinate is zero. You plug in zero for x. If we do that, we're left with negative 3 on the top and positive 12 on the bottom. So our y-intercept, this is not in the instructions, but you can add it to it, is zero, negative 1 fourth. Okay, that's just a simple detail that we can add to our graph. Now, I'm going to go to the calculator to help me graph the rest of this because we've just kind of set up the structure. We need, we need a little bit more detail. So, in y equals, I'm going to type in my expression. I'm going to type in the original, okay? Make sure the numerator is in parentheses. Make sure the denominator is in parentheses. Make sure you put the parentheses. I don't know how many times somebody has come to me and said, my graph doesn't look like yours. Well, you didn't put any parentheses in it. You have to have those or it's not the same function. The calculator follows the order of operations. So if you don't have those parentheses, it's just going to divide the two closest things together and it's going to add the rest of the stuff to it. And it's not the same thing. Okay? Um, let's look at the table first. I didn't mean to press graph yet. I meant to go to the table first. Uh, let's look at our characteristics. We don't have any holes. Our vertical asymptote is at negative 3. So at negative 3, we should see an error for our y value, and we do. Horizontal asymptote doesn't show up in the table. Uh, we can check our x-intercept and our y-intercept. At 0, the uh, y value is negative 0.25. That's negative 1 fourth. And at 3, the y value is 0. There's our y and our x-intercepts. Now I'm going to look at the graph. Okay, this is what a rational function looks like. Now, I don't like that the calculator put a vertical line right here. Okay, it's not actually a part of the graph. Okay, so I don't like that it puts that vertical line there because these two pieces of your graph are not connected to each other. They are two distinct curves right here. So we're going to draw them as such. Um, we need a little bit more detail, so I need a y value over here to the left of my vertical asymptote. So let's find a nice whole number. Oh, there's one. Negative 5, positive 1. Negative 5, positive 1. Anytime, guys, you're asked to graph something, you always plug it in and look at the table, pick some points off and plot them, okay? And then here's what happens. Our graphs always approach our asymptotes. So you get really close to them. You don't actually touch them, but you get really close to them. Um, and you just give your graph some curve there. All right, and obviously a little bit of a tight squeeze there around the x-axis on the right side, but that's what this graph looks like. Now, I mentioned the horizontal asymptote describes the end behavior. Um, so as we're going off to the left here, as x is going to negative 40, a lot of our are getting closer and closer to 0.25. As our x values are going to positive infinity, our y values are getting closer and closer to 0.25. You can see that on the table. If I start scrolling here, 
it takes a little bit, but see how they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're getting closer and closer and closer to, for a while they're hanging at 0.28 and 0.27. If I go really a far ways away, let me go to uh, let me go to negative two hundred. X is negative two hundred. Um, look at all those. They're right there at point two five. I could go to the positive two hundred, and they would be right there at point two five. That's what a horizontal asymptote describes: is where are my x values approaching, or excuse me, where are my y values approaching to the ends of my function. Okay, so we get another one. Let's look at number 18. Okay, factor the numerator factors into x plus 4, x minus 1. Again, you've got to be careful with the factoring, guys, or you're going to mess up these characteristics. The bottom, we start by taking out a GCF of 4. x squared minus 5x plus 4, and that will factor further. You want to always factor as much as possible because if you don't, you're likely to miss a hole or something like that. The bottom is x minus 4 times x minus 1. Like I was saying, you've got to be careful when you're factoring. If you put plus 4, then you would get two holes, and there aren't actually two holes. So, uh, what can we cancel? x minus 1 in the top and in the bottom. So that means we have a hole at, and actually, you know what, let me write the simplified, the fully simplified version here. x plus 4 over 4 times x minus 4. That is the fully simplified version of our function. Okay, now let's talk about the hole. We canceled x minus 1, so we set that equal to 0. So that means we have a hole at x equals 1. I'll show you how to put that on the graph here in a minute. You don't just put it on the x-axis. We'll see that here in just a second. Vertical asymptotes. What is left in the denominator we set equal to 0. 4 does not equal 0. x minus 4 can. So x equals 4 is our vertical asymptote. Okay. Horizontal asymptote, compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. I always go back to the original. Degree 2 over degree 2, so they're the same, so it's the ratio of the coefficients. Well, guess what? Those leading coefficients are the same as the example we just did. So y equals 1 fourth is our horizontal asymptote again. Yes, that is sheerly coincidental. It is not always going to be our horizontal asymptote. Okay, it just so happens that the generator that I used to make this gave me the exact same leading coefficients, two problems in a row. All right, x-intercepts, simplified numerator equal to zero, so x plus four is equal to zero, so that means negative four, zero is my x-intercept. Y-intercept, I plug in zero for x, you can plug that into the original or you can plug it into the simplified version. Either way, you would get 4 over negative 16, which is negative 1 fourth again. Again, surely coincidental. Okay, now this time, and this is where we're going to end. I uh, promise I'm wrapping it up. Okay, uh, I'm going to type in the original. And I'm going to type in my simplified version because I want to show you something here. Okay? Entire numerator in parentheses, entire denominator in parentheses. Okay, same thing with my simplified version. Make sure that 4 gets inside the parentheses and then x minus 4 gets its own set of parentheses. Okay, uh, i got to fix my table. Let's go back to like negative 5. <laughs> Alright, so when I look at my table, I've got a hole at x equals 1. Notice that y1 gives me an error, but y2 gives me a value. That's because it's a hole. 
So that's the y-coordinate of my hole. So I can put my hole at one negative point.